encontramos en un momento de lujo uno de los más grandes peleadores en la historia de la UFC. Se encuentra de visita aquí en la República Mexicana. Para mí es un verdadero placer y un honor poder platicar con Charlie David Lydell, better known as Chuck Lydell, the Iceman. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, bro. So the first question. All, all your fans are really excited because you decide to come back in the octagon. How was the decision of, of, of doing that? Uh, I, I never planned on, on being done. I thought I needed some time off uh, to to, get, to do some things and get get a, let my body heal a little bit and um, let my head heal a little bit. And, uh, and I'm ready to come back. I'm, I'm excited to come back and, uh, and get after it. Awesome. Are you going to change in any way your training uh, in this comeback? I've always evolved my training, but I've been working with some guys on, on a little more, a little more of my wrestling stuff, a little more, a little more, uh, a little different uh, striking stuff. But uh, just trying to add some stuff to what I, I used to do and trying to clean some stuff up. You know, get get a little uh, uh, clean, clean a few holes. So, so we've been working on that for a while, and I, I you know, I think we're ready to come back. Do you still training with the pit camp? Yeah, I'm still training with the pit camp. We brought in a few other guys, but yeah, we're we're still uh, still together. Uh, Fighting strong, I'll, I'll be with the pit for the rest of my life, so uh, I, I don't change camps. So. <laughs> awesome. Now, a lot of people want to know, are you fighting Tito? Or Because in the last days, you know, all the rumors, if it's going to be Rich Franklin or probably Tito Ortiz, what is going to happen? Uh, it better be Tito after me having to deal with him for, for that <laughs> show. It better be him. I mean, I, I, if it's not him, I told him. I told him well, they, if, uh, when he was, I said he wasn't going to fight me because he's a He's not. I don't know if I can say that on TV. Yeah, you can say. It's, right. it's a music channel. That's all right because he's a pussy. Yeah. But anyway, uh, but uh, if he does it, I'm gonna, I might find him at his house. <laughs> I'm going after him. I, I, I want to find, you know. So it better be him. But I, as far as I know, I've been told uh, by, hey, I'll be fighting him next. So. So how much change the focus before a fight in the preparing uh, process if you don't really know which fighter you're gonna fight because i mean i read in the dana white twitter that it's not going to be uh rich franklin that he's fighting randy couture that pro but but he don't say that you're going to fight tito like literally um well for me i mean i'm in shape i'm ready to go i mean uh I, i'm sure if, if it's going to change they'll let me know but if it's a change if there's little small changes you make for certain fighters for different fighters and different fighters um not a big big change for me I, i'm i try to make people fight my fight So, uh, you know, I, there's little differences you do for different guys, but uh, it's not big. So make an adjustment if they do make changes or, or whatever. It doesn't, matter, doesn't bother me too much. Now, uh, season 11 of The Ultimate Fighter is just around the corner. Tell us a little bit what can we expect about that season. Uh, it was a very interesting season. We can't say much. No, about I know, I know, I know. Talk about it, but, but middleweights. It's an interesting weight. It's an inter interesting weight class. There's some fun. There's some fun fights on the show. It's uh, some some interesting things go on on the show. Uh, but uh, that's about as much as I can say about it. But yeah, check it out. It's gonna it's gonna be interesting. Awesome. Now I I say in my Twitter that I, I'm yesterday that I'm gonna interview you. So a lot of fans start sending me questions to caught my attention. So I'm gonna ask you these two questions. First of all, uh, how hard is to be a coach uh, when you're when you're used to be a fighter and not really a coach? Actually, coaching coaching guys at that level uh, is fun for me. It's uh you know it's kind of we're just working with guys, making little changes, making little adjustments because you're not really taking a guy from from the beginning and getting them there so that, that takes time and like but for me it's just making guys working with guys making making them better and actually helping me get better at certain things learning how to teach certain things it sometimes makes you makes you figure out how you do it better so now the other question that the fans uh, write is how annoying is in real life Tito Ortiz uh, he's very annoying uh, I, he just he just makes no sense i mean stuff stuff he does is You know, I, I don't get it. I don't. I don't like the guy. He's not. Yeah. You know, it's it's one of those things. It's he's he's it gets on my nerves. So yeah. I mean, there's there's he's one of the the only guys in in, in MMA right now that I don't like. You know uh, that well that I that I know. So now uh, you kick Tito's ass twice. Uh, How hard it change when you are planning to fight uh, another time and again the guy that you fought twice before? Well, the thing with him was, I, you know, I was looking at it as a tune-up fight. You know, I just coming back off a year off. You know, I knocked him out twice already. Uh, you know, this would be an easy fight to come back to. 
uh, but I was pretty confident, and he did it within a week of us shooting that show. Um, got me to the point where I, I, I really want to hurt him. So, you know, it's he's got me motivated, so I'm training to try to try it the way I should train for a fight and getting ready. And, and uh, he, you know, he messed up. I think he knows he messed up, but he messed up getting me mad, uh, getting me upset. I, you know, it's not I, – I don't like him, and he's, he's, he's motivated me to train, and I'm training hard, so I'm going after him. Now, he's saying that he don't want to uh, exchange with you. He want to go to the ground. It's like the smartest move he could ever do. Of course. Of course he doesn't want to exchange with me. He, doesn't, he wants to go to the ground. But he can't beat me on the ground anyway. I'll beat, I'll, he can't, he can't out-wrestle me. He can't, can't out, uh, out-strike me for sure. Um, but that's, he's got he's to make some attempts. And when he, when he can't take, take me down, if, if, if I want to take him down, I'll take him down. If, if it's going to be on the ground, it's because I chose, chose for it to be there. Now, talking precisely about the ground game, uh, if we take notice of the of your last fights, hard fights, uh, did that make you an idea to try to develop more the ground game in your next fights? Um, I've been doing. Uh, I've been doing. Uh, I think I got away from mixing up, back going back back and forth between the ground and the stand up uh, a while ago, and I think that's one of the things I, I, I'm going to get back to. But I've been doing. I mean, it's. I've been doing submission stuff since you know 97 so i've been doing it a long time it's uh, i'm it's it's always been part of my game it just it hasn't been something i've used a whole lot but uh you know we'll, we'll see it just depends on who i'm fighting who i'm, who I'm who what i'm gonna do so tito no i'm gonna be punching him in the head so that's all that's all he goes out so that's that's it just depends on the the, the fighter i'm fighting so and definitely it's the, all the fans want to see that kind of game uh, with you, like trying to knock him out. Now, talking about, about yourself, we see the, the tattoo that you have on your school exactly. Uh, when did you did it and what is that meaning? Uh, 92. Uh, 92 uh, and it was uh, it's my original cry style. It's what we wear on our black belt. When we get our black belt, we, that we wear that on our gi instead of our, our gym patch. It's now your it's my original, it's from my original cry style. Now, um, talking about about the how much have changed the MMA world since you were since the time you were champion until right now. Oh, it's it's just kept getting bigger and bigger. I mean that that the sport, like we said, well, once it got out to people to see it, it's going to keep growing and growing. I mean, I think and down here, especially when people try it out and check it out more, you get more and more fans. We'll convert a lot of those boxing fans. I mean, uh, you know great boxing roots down here but people start understanding this is a great sport too uh and it's fun to watch awesome. now uh we know that that your your father uh if some of your son or if your son want to be a fighter did you mind i don't mind actually i'm pretty stoked uh you know he, he actually uh, asked to go train at a mixed martial arts gym this uh from uh this last month so he's decided to go back to doing it um he'd always he worked out in to have martial arts school before, but then they moved and he had stopped and he was just doing the regular sports. And then now he's like, "Hey, can I?" You know, he wants he wants to train at this gym. So, so his mom got him in working on on his own. That's kind of the way I wanted. I don't I don't want to push him, make him do anything. I don't want to make him do what I want to do. But I'm glad he wants to he wants to do what I want to do. And, and, and what about if your daughter want to be a, a fighter? If she wants to be a fighter, that, that's fine with me too. She's she's a, t she's a tough girl, but. Uh, She's real competitive, uh, but uh, she likes uh, dancing and swimming. So I don't, I don't think she, she, she does it. Her, her mom fights, uh, so, so you know it's, it's possible. You know, mom and her dad fight, so it's, it's a possibility.